Hey guys, we are Bombay TV. Guys, we're going to react to it. Jessica. Guys, we're going to be checking out when Dr. Shebi Ali destroyed both guests on national TV. Guys, let's get straight into this. It's Jesus Christ. It's one of the most controversial questions of the ages. Who is Jesus? Is he a good man? Is he a prophet? Or is he, as Christians believe, actually divine? Well, meet Mike Lacona. He's founder of Risen Jesus, a Christian organization in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and co-author of The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus. And here's Shabir Ali. He's founder of the Islamic Information Center in Toronto, Canada, and author of the book, Is Jesus God? The Bible Says No. Now, Shabir, as a Muslim, how is it that you view Jesus? Who is he? You don't consider him to be divine. Uh, I consider him to be the prophet and messiah of God, born of the Virgin Mary. He performed many miraculous deeds. God raised him miraculously, and we expect his uh, supernatural return. Uh, but he is not the son of God. He is not uh, divine in any way. And no. Okay, Michael, now you're making the affirmative claim that Jesus is indeed divine. Now, that's an easy claim to make, but what evidence do you have that he believed that and that he proved it to be true? Well, Lee, scholars have established that within ju uh, just a few years of Jesus' crucifixion, the early Christians were regarding him as divine, despite the fact that he had been crucified. Now, what on earth would have led them to this type of uh, belief, a belief that was so strong that they were willing to die for it? We have historical evidence that Jesus claimed divinity and rose from the dead. When someone claims to be divine and rises from the dead, we should believe him. Shabir, how do you respond to that? Well, I feel that uh, Mike is putting words into the lips of Jesus, uh, saying that Jesus must have claimed that because the disciples believed it. Uh, to, uh, to address the first uh, point, there is nothing recorded in the Gospel showing that Jesus clearly affirmed his own divinity. And second, there is evidence in the Acts of the Apostles and elsewhere in the New Testament that the original followers of Jesus did not actually take him to be God. Okay, Michael, those are important assertions mm -hmm. there. Uh, did Jesus believe he was God, and how do we know? it would seem that he hadn't read the New Testament if he's going to make the statement that the New Testament nowhere has any place where Jesus claimed to be divine. It's filled with those kind of claims. But I think what he's probably referring to are statements that can be historically verified or for which we have good evidence. For example? Well, for example, you've got Mark chapter 14, verses 61 through 64, where Jesus is before the uh, Jewish leaders and the high priest says, are you the, the Messiah, the Son of God? And Jesus says, Yes, and you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, that's something in the Old Testament that only God does, and seated at the right hand of power. In other words, he's claiming to be a co-occupant of God's throne. Shabir, has he convinced you? <laughs> no, I don't think so, because he's referring to the trial uh, of Jesus before the Jewish Sanhedrin, and this is reported variously in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, and uh, in, in Matthew and Luke's uh, versions, we have it that Jesus uh, did not actually affirm the title. He said, you are the ones claiming that I am, it, it, in essence. And to say that Jesus comes on the clouds of heaven proves that he is uh, God himself, that would be to say that God could not do this for one of his creatures. So I do not think um, that arguing from silence will make Jesus as God, it is clear that to affirm Jesus as God involves uh, a, a logical self-contradiction, it involves a contradiction with the divine scriptures, and it involves also a, a religious problem. Now I want to return you to that passage uh, from the trial before the Jewish Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin asks him, uh, are you the Messiah, son of the living God? Now, and, and it says that Jesus said, I am, in Mark's gospel, but in Matthew and Luke's account of the same episode, Jesus says, you say that I am. And unless you can first establish the actual words of Jesus, you cannot build uh, a reasonable uh, commentary on that. Now, it's okay, better but Shabir, to say what does he say right after that you say that I am? He says, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and seated at the right hand of power. I mean, so these you are have to decide, are you, saying, are you saying that his divinity is based on his saying uh, I am or his saying that he's coming on the clouds of heaven? First of coming all, there is the nothing clear. Coming on the clouds of heaven, seated at the right hand of okay. power. Well, here I'm saying that God can do that for any of his creatures, and that would not make the creature himself God. If God calls up a creature with Jesus him to his throne... Jesus is claiming to be a co-occupant of God's throne.
I believe Jesus is God. No, I don't believe Jesus is God. I believe there's a separate. Um, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I absolutely believe that Jesus is God. I don't think Jesus ever claimed to be God. I think probably he was uh, sort of like a pop star. We're back talking about Jesus. Is he divine as Christianity claims or just a prophet of God as Islam claims? Now, Shabir, Mike's been referring to New Testament records that are much closer to the actual life of Jesus than the Quran, which Muhammad recorded some 600 years later. So why should we consider the Quran to be a better historical record when it's so much later than these New Testament accounts? Well, the Quran does not claim to be a better historical record. The Quran claims to reaffirm that teaching which is there in the earlier historical record, namely the Gospels themselves. And it calls upon the people of the Gospel to judge by what God has revealed in the Gospels. And when we look at the Gospels, we see that Jesus throughout was referring to himself as the Son of Man, which means a human being, that he had human limitations. He did not know everything. He said of that day and hour, no man knows, not even the Son, but the Father only. Uh, he said, I can of myself do nothing. Uh, I do only as the Father has commanded me. Throughout, Jesus is deferring to God, and in fact, he falls in his face and he prays to God. All of these are human attributes which the Quran affirms as clear evidence that Jesus was a prophet, he was a human servant and messenger of God. Okay, Michael, that's, uh, those are some very good points that the Quran talks about, refers to in the Gospels. How do you look at the matter? Well, it's how Christians have looked at it from the very beginning, that Jesus had two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. So simply, he had these limitations in his human nature while not in his divine nature. Uh, you, you must have it such that Jesus is completely God and completely man at the same time. That is like saying that something is a square circle. You cannot be both, because to be human means to have limitations. To be divine means to have none. You cannot be limited and unlimited at the same time, unless you're schizophrenic, in which you have two different personalities here. Okay, Michael, Jesus is Jesus defers, schizophrenic? Let's, let's answer that question. <laughs> well, no. I mean, he was completely human in his human nature, and he was completely divine in his divine nature, and this is pretty clear throughout the New Testament. But when we come to the Quran, what we find is a Jesus that um, is quite different than what we find in the New Testament. It's a Jesus who comes out of the womb speaking and preaching. It's a Jesus... Uh, who's part of a trinity that includes the Father, Son, and Mary. It's a Jesus that we find in the Gnostic Gospel I think you have, misunderstood the, you have misunderstood the Quran here because the Quran does not say that Jesus is part of a trinity uh, that involves uh, God, Mary, and Jesus. The Quran refutes well, the belief of those... Well, that might be a certain interpretation of it, but... The, the Quran refutes the belief of those who uh, claim this. Uh, but uh, what the Quran shows clearly is that Jesus cannot be part of a trinity because no such thing as a trinity exists. That God is one throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. The word Trinity does not exist in the Bible. This is a later idea. Well, that neither does theology, at. Shabir, but we both believe theology is real. I mean, listen, look, what we have of the Quran is this. We've got a book that's written 600 years after Jesus, fifth hand source at best. Um, it's written in a different country, a different culture, in a different language in which Jesus yeah, Mike, lived Yeah, Michael, you're missing the point because one doesn't need the Quran to affirm that Jesus is a human being and a prophet. The Quran, by affirming that Jesus is a prophet, is not saying something new than what Christians already believe because the gospel showed that he's a prophet and Christians, despite believing that Jesus is God, also affirm that he's a prophet. So on that, Christians will agree with the Quran. Shabir, Shabir let me ask this then. Where, where did this idea that Jesus is God come from? Well, the idea that Jesus is God is something that evolved over time. We can see in the pages of the New Testament itself and Acts of the Apostles that people very easily in the Greek or Roman world took people for gods. Shabir, I want to tell you, I've written a 300-page book on the evidence that convinced me as an atheist I've read uh, it. that Jesus did claim to be the Son of God, and he proved it by returning from the dead. And so my last question to you, and we just have a moment, is what would you say to Christians like me who are absolutely convinced by the evidence that the evidence supports those claims? I would say that you have to start by looking at the logical problems with claiming that Jesus is God and then interpret the scriptures in a reasonable way that does not uh, give rise to these logical problems. Okay. To say that he was God and man at the same time is logically self-contradictory. To say he's one of a trinity is also to introduce yeah. another logical contradiction. Guys, this was a lot more. I feel the title was. If this is not supposed, I feel it could have been. Um, when Dr. Shapi Ali debated both Mike, Likona, and Host three on, but not destroyed. I don't yeah, think they he were destroyed literally them. just having a conversation. Yes, a cool conversation, and it was amazing. But something came to my mind. 
if you say, I, I, no, we're not going to that Jesus is not Jesus. Because me, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, I'll leave it there. But Jesus have himself said he is the Son of God. So I'll take what the Bible wrote. So we'll leave it at that. But if we want to say Jesus doesn't die, it's more easier to believe that Jesus doesn't die than to believe Jesus ascended to heaven. But how will a human being go to heaven, yeah. like with his body and start flying without a rocket? <laughs> like, so if we believe in faith and we believe what was written, it was written that he died and he resurrected. So it's like you saying, don't believe the Bible. It's, it does not just make sense. But I still want do you have anything to say about Yes, that? and then people saying, um, people who have this argument, is Jesus God, is Jesus not God? I would say even God himself said it, that when they were baptized, when John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus, and then this dove came from heaven, yeah. and he was like, this is my I son with who I'm well pleased with. So that also validates the fact that Jesus is the it's son of so God. Right. I think we should all let this matter die here now. <laughs> No, but the debate is actually if Jesus is God. I don't believe Jesus is God. Guys, I just like share that on channel. We'll see you next time, guys.